So last week we were talking about going on a treasure hunt. And some of the treasures I talked about last week were self-talk, kindness, and just appreciating the small things. That if we just appreciate and just give in small ways, that we are actually creating treasures on heaven. And what I invited you to do, I don't know if anyone did, is to, to look for an treasures all week long, that we're on this treasure hunt all week long. And so I'm just wondering, did anyone actually go on treasure hunts this week, like consciously look around your life and experience what tre some treasures for you? Did anyone do that? I see some nods, but no one wants to say it too much because they know I'll call on you. <laughs> so I won't, in the, does someone want to raise their hand and share one? You don't have to. We have a shy crowd today. Anyone want to share a treasure that you did? Some people sent me treasures, like they showed me that treasures they were finding, but all right, all right. I'll just keep it in mind. So we're still, okay, Gloria, yes, come on up. But I have to hold the microphone. <laughs> keep it in the microphone. We saw the same <laughs> Well, this was just too much fun. I shared it with my sisters. It's, it, it, it was just a news article about a baby seal in San Diego that crawls on the surfboards of surfers down there. And it shows in the midst of all of these surfers, this baby seal will get on the surfboard and it will sit there and ride as they're surfing it. It was just too much fun. I just read about that this morning. I thought of you. That's funny how much you love otters. All right. It's a treasure. Playfulness. It's actually a really important thing to think about. So this uh, actually was a oh, greater challenge than I thought. Um, well, f well, first let's just go, what is? A the great thing is in, in talking to people is, what does that even mean, a pearl of great price? So. The idea of a pearl of great price, it comes from the gospel, and it's just two lines, and basically what Jesus is saying is that, so you have all these treasures, you find all these treasures, lots of pearls, everywhere you go, you're opening up, but there's one pearl that is worth all the others, and that's the pearl of great price. And what's interesting about it, it's not pearls, it's one pearl. And so the question is, there's a singularity to it. So, so even, we're reading Autobiography of a Yogi in our book group, and we haven't gotten there yet, but Yogananda talks a lot about meditating on the third eye, the singular eye, oneness as opposed to duality. The two eyes are duality, the single eye. And also in the Gospels, keep your eye single, single pearl. This idea of singularity, a house not divided, not going this way and that way, this way, but a singularity, the power of a singularity. Say, if we're going in so many different directions, we actually can't thrive. The way we thrive is to discover and to know the singularity, the singleness of purpose. So for me, was, I thought this was going to be sort of a easy, okay, of course, what's your pearl and come up with the answer. But do you know there's a spiritual, I know some, most of you know, because we've talked about it, the, the, there, the spiritual practice of who am I? So that's a type of spiritual practice called inquiry, and you can do it with anything, contemplation. So you can answer who am I by all the different roles that you play. You can answer who am I by your personality type, your anagram number, your astrology number, your Myers-Briggs. You can answer that many human ways. And then spiritually, we can answer it. I am one, I'm the, I am one with the divine presence, and I am expression of the divine presence. We start all our prayers that way. There's only one power, one presence, and I'm one with it. So anyone can answer that question of who am I, but the path of inquiry is just to stay in the question and move beyond just the concepts, to move beyond our mind answering the question and opening to a greater truth. And I didn't expect it, but that actually became what happened for me this past week. I was in this question of what is the pearl of great price for me, and I thought I had the answer, and I just quickly gave my answer. 
But as I let it marinate inside of me, it just went deeper and deeper and deeper. There was another Rumi poem, I didn't use it today, but to say that the idea that to find that pearl of great price, you have to dive deep. It's not on the surface. You gotta go really deep to find that pearl. And what I found was that as I was going deeper, I thought, oh no, how am I ever gonna talk about this? Because you start moving beyond the world of concepts. When, often when we're speaking, we're speaking from concepts. Here's an idea, sharing ideas. But when you start moving into that spiritual realm, it gets harder to talk about. So I'm gonna do my best, but what I wanna to offer to you today is the same gift that I have, is this week, no matter what I say, these are just concepts that I'm giving, is give yourself the gift of the inquiry of what is the pearl of great price for me. And you are, might have an instant answer and you may not, but what a powerful thing it gives to you because this is it. It's the singularity of your life. It's kind of a worthwhile question to invite and to inquire and to take into your week's practice. At least I've been speaking for 23 years. This, the, this had to be one of the richest weeks that I had. I was so filled to a place where I didn't even want to talk about it because it just felt so shallow compared to the experience. So I'm offering all of you, first and foremost, that's the most important thing, is be with the question, what is the pearl of great price for me? The pearl, singular, not all the pearls, single pearl. I had to wear this just so I could wear the pearls. <laughs> so the pearl in this case is the Christ. So to understand, so in, in traditional Christianity, they would say it's Jesus Christ. Was, is, that's some of the people's answers. They have different answers. It's, but, um, and so the way we understand the Christ is that Jesus is an in, so the Christ is the individuation of the divine. So you have one power, one presence, and then the one power and the one presence individuates as all of us. So Carl Jung said the way to follow the Christ is to follow that divine essence within each of us, that we all have a fully orbed essence within each of us, and it's unique to all eight billion people, all the billions of people, or millions of people before us and after us. Every one of us is unique and to connect with that divine presence and follow it, follow that Christ presence. So Christ, when they say Jesus, the Christ, is he was a fully realized Christ presence. He allowed and gave himself completely to the divinity within him. And Buddha did the same thing. And, and in Hinduism, the word is Atman, the divine soul, individuated soul. So you have this pearl, this Christ pearl. Now it's interesting, in the, the, the pearl, the way it's made, it's like a little parasite that's in the, in the oyster. They used to think it's sand, but they don't think it's sand anymore. It's like a little, and the oyster protects itself, so it puts a layer over it, the same layer that it puts on the inside of the oyster shell. So you've seen the luminescent, shiny stuff on the inside of the oyster shell. That's the same thing it's covering the pearl with. And the pearl is many, many layers. It takes two years to make. They're very fine layers. And what I love about that is that we are, um, I love to use, I'm sure other people said it, but I, Reverend Michael Beckwith is the one I hear the most, which is we are multidimensional beings. And this is part of the singularity. That's, this is why it takes us deeper and deeper, because actually we all have all these little fine layers on top of each other that have created this incredible pearl that is our soul. So our soul is multidimensional. So we can say, well, I have many different aspects and all of that is accurate. So we just have to go deeper and deeper. What's that singularity that defines all of these layers? And I love when Rumi says in the poem that we heard today is that we're participating in the process. It's not just an event that is us and we just watch it. We're not just passive bystanders. He said, we are the fluid. We are the, the same. He said, we're, basically, we're the, the moisture that the oyster uses to create the pearl. We're that. We're creating the pearl as we go. So it's there and we're co-creating it. We're participating in the beauty and the refinement of this pearl. So we're refining our individual and unique essence. I love that participation. And he also says in a few lines before that, because the, the person asked, well, I'm so restless. 
And we think of a pearl as being a solid, stable thing. He said, no, one drop of ocean doesn't stay still. It moves with the ocean. So our essence is moving. That's how we form this beautiful pearls. We're also moving with all the different energies in our life that are forming this unique essence that we are. Otherwise, what's the point in being on Earth? If we're already fully realized, there's no, the whole point of our life here, I think, one of the whole points, in my small little human opinion, is everything that's unfolding and creating our individual beautiful radiant pearl. And that all of our life circumstances and our relationships and everything that's happening is part of that refinement process to make ourselves be this beautiful pearl. Isn't that awesome? So how do we find what this pearl is? Well, just looking at more constructively as opposed, so there's just the inquiry. That's the best part, just being in the, let spirit guide us. But for the sake of having a Sunday talk, <laughs> let's look at it some other ways. And one of the ways that came to me was looking at Jack, because he, to me, he's an obvious one. And, and I was telling him just this morning, I'm like, I just, I don't know how to talk about it. I need something concrete. And then he just left, and I'm like, oh, he's concrete. <laughs> because Jack knew from the time that as far as I, any story he's ever told, he's always loved music. He's loved music. He eats, breathes, and sleeps music. So one could say his soul is a music soul. That divine individuation of him is that music beingness. So here, so uh, well, first let me say, one of the things that Yogananda says is that the way we discover our true essence, the uh, uh, before it all before all the layers are added on, is to look in our childhood. That our child, so we were born with it, and you don't have all the layers yet, so you can connect with it more easily and clearly. Here's what's funny about this, and, and, and I'm using Jack and I both as an example to you. When I was telling Jack about the Pearl of Great Price this morning, he said, I have no idea what that is. And I'm like, duh. <laughs> music, but it's so natural to him, I don't think, I mean, it's just it's, it's everyday life. Why would he even think about it? The same thing was true for me. When I heard this from Yogananda, decades, I'm not talking a few years, decades, I'm like, well, what could it be? And I, you know, I was going back to my childhood, I like sports, I like dancing, I liked, I thought of being a writer for a while, and I kept saying, well, maybe I should do this. Or, and it was, first of all, I was focused on what to do, I was trying to figure out what to do. So I was looking at the things that I liked to do as a kid. Decades before, I'm like, duh. I mean, it was just right there from nursery school. Like, when he's saying going back to kids, I mean, when you're tiny, you know. And here's how you know. You ready? It just brings, <laughs> it brings you so much joy. It just brings, you don't have to work at it. I love, I, I liked sports. I didn't love them. I was good at them, but I, I didn't think sports. I wasn't playing. I mean, I loved going out and playing every day, but it's just a different quality. And what I can say is when you know, you know that you know that you know. And it, so it's a joy, and it's a joy that you love to do when you're by yourself. You'll, you'll do it. You want to give it. It's another really important part because the, the divine essence within you, this pearl of great price, it has to be shared. It has to be given. One of the first urges you're going to feel when you're a little kid is, I want to give this to somebody else. I want to share. Not to, so you don't have it, but to share. I have to share this pearl of great price, this divine essence of my soul. So you're going to feel joy. You're going to have to want to share it. So again, looking at Jack, the thing about, he didn't start, I don't even know, I, I, I somehow I think of you, Jack, start not really starting to even begin to play guitar like at 12 or something. But you really, in high school is when it really took off. However, the first thing Jack says he wants to do is he wanted to be a DJ. It's the same thing. He wanted to give music. His soul, he's a musical soul, and he, he didn't have an instrument at the time. He didn't sing at the time when he was a little one. So the way it comes to him is, I'll be a DJ, and I'll give music that way. And then he starts to learn music. I'll give music this way, and I'll give, it's just he can't help it. 
We all have that. When you feel a joy, that divine essence, and you have to give it, not because you have to because someone tells you to do it or you're supposed to give, but it's out of joy. Out of joy, you share it. When you're with your friends, Jack, oh my gosh, this, he's been working so hard. He's just immersed in music. Musical camp, had kids, he's playing gigs all the time. He wears himself out. So when he has free time, what does he do? He goes to his friend's backyard and they play music. <laughs> when he wants to decompress, what does he do? He comes home and he plays music. It's ever present, even in the recharging, it's there. When you want to recharge your soul, you go to that same place. Again, and I'm using him because it's easy to see with the music. So you might say, well, there's a lot of things I like. That's, you might go through the same thing I do. Just go to what's so, what would you say is just so inherently you, you don't even think about it. Like, it's just not even a, like, and, and, and for me, it's like, I thought everybody was that way. Just, so I didn't even think that it was being particularly, I didn't think it was a thing. I thought it just was. So it's so natural to you. And you'll see it from little, from nursery school, kindergarten. It, you don't have to be developing it. And then, but you ultimately will develop it. So as Jack has grown in music, he's developed it. He takes classes, he talks about it, he learns about it, he learns different styles, he finds different groups. And he said so many different incarnations of playing music, of participating in music throughout his life. That's what we do. When we have, that's part of this refinement of the pearl is I think he would say he's a better musician now than he was five years ago, than he was 10 years ago, because he's constantly refining the pearl. What have you been spending your life on? And you didn't have, try. It's not because you took, someone who told you. What have you been refining about yourself, about your true essence your whole life? You can't help it. You've just been refining it and getting better at different things. And it brings you joy. It doesn't mean you don't wear yourself out but you do it because it brings you joy. But then you have a problem of what happens. So music is a sort of wonderful and outstanding. And also, well, I'll, I'll get there. So there, there's also, but I think of Julian who loves sports. And we were listening to Abby Wambach because it's the World Cup soccer has started, you know, Women's World Cup soccer. And Abby Wambach was on the We Can Do Hard Things, and she was talking about her experience being in the World Cup. And she also had an interview with Megan Rapinoe, who's on the, her last year at the World Cup. And it, it's so clear, Abby talks about what a depression she went through when it was over, because she was one of those people, this is her thing playing soccer ever since she was a kid, immersed, passion, this is all she did. But physically, your body, eventually gives out in athletics in a way that it doesn't in music. I was just watching, in fact, a video of a woman who's 108 years old and still practices the piano four hours every day. 108 practicing four hours a day. Music can go on forever, but physicality starts to change. So it reminds me of a conversation that uh, Michael Beckwith had with a NHL hockey player. He said he came to him because he was retired. And, and I'm saying this because in the World Cup soccer, with Abby and then Megan, is, this is her last year. What do you do when it's gone? Who are you then? What's your pearl of great price? And that's why you came here. That's what you excel at. That's what you get all your feedback from. This is where you belong. What do you do then? Depression is real. So this NHL hockey, his, his world, his profession was over now. He aged out. Who am I? What's my purpose? And so what Reverend Michael worked with him was to find out who he was a layer below. We're multi-layers. It's never the thing that you are doing. It's not a job. Jack has been teaching young children music since the 1990s, but that's not who he is. That's not his Pearl of Great Price. That's an expression of his Pearl of Great Price. So the question is, is what was behind all the athleticism? What is the expression that you are finding? And this is the layers that we start going into. That's why this question, it takes us deeper and deeper because everything, if you say your children are your reason, are your pearl of great price. My, my family is my pearl of great price. Your family's gonna go away. Everything of this world, as I've mentioned a few thousand times, 100 years from now, we were all gonna be probably, unless we're all 
can um, download ourselves onto chat GPT. <laughs> We're all, you know, in another dimension. We're going. Everything in this world is temporary, which is a good thing. That's not a bad thing. I think that's how we reset and renew and reju rejuvenate. So if your pearl of great price has a thing in the temporary, anything in the temporary world, it's going to go away. And so one of the things that, as I watched Jack on his journey from when I met him to where he is today, I've really seen how he's deepened in his spirituality of music. Like he really, he was talking last night with one of his musician friends about how much he loves George Harrison who brought spirituality to music. And I see Jack doing that. He just, every, all his spiritual practices, it starts oozing out through what he's doing. He did a UN day with his little kids at Valley Montessori School and a mother came and her kids had been in Christian school and she said after I went to that I changed my kids to this school she said this this music program has more of God in it than the Christian school my kids are at Jack isn't coming in saying I'm gonna be spiritual now it oozes through him is taking his music to another level he prays now before he does gigs I'm using his as an example, but this is when we start giving our go deeper and deeper and deeper, it starts to infuse. Your pearl of great price will infuse everything that you do. So it's not just about you. It's about the divine, which is in everyone and everything. We start to realize that we are actually, our pearl of great price is not singular in terms of me and you, but this pearl of great price includes the entire cosmos. And that's why we just keep going deeper and deeper into it because the deeper we go, the more we feel our unification with all beings. This is why it's a really good question, inquiry, practice. What is the pearl of great price for me? It's gonna take you deep into your soul and into the joy of your soul. You, you know that you're not connected if you're not feeling this deep and abiding joy. Finding where the joy is finding and discovering that you have to share it, you have to give it. And then the other way to really get connected with the pearl of great price within you is when you're going through the hardest times of your life. Because it's that that will save you. I remember as a kid I had my ideas of, well, I could face these difficult things because of this, that, or the other thing. And then when those really difficult times came, those things I was so sure were gonna be my protection against the really bad stuff turned out not to be my protection against the really bad stuff. And it was such a shock, because I was so sure. And it all disappeared. As I was doing my inquiry this week, I was swimming in our pool. I don't, I don't know why. It, my, my little bracelet matches the pool water and I was feeling the divine mother and, and it just reminded me, I, it just came. It just came, this experience in my life where I remember having this thought, oh my gosh, everything is gone. Why am I even here? It doesn't even matter to anybody whether I exist on this planet. And I don't, I'm not saying that I wasn't suicidal, I was just being honest with myself. It was an honest moment of like, I don't really think my life matters. I was being very practical about it. And I was in that moment of just feeling completely irrelevant and invisible and unimportant and unvaluable, all of those things. When there was a divine presence in front of me, and what was interesting was it was darkness. It wasn't this great light, it was this darkness, but it was, that's why I love that the, in the reading about I'm just a single candle in your vast darkness. It was a positive thing. It was a loving thing. And I've just read recently about Moses in the dark cloud when he got the Ten Commandments, Mount Sinai. He was in a dark cloud. I never heard that before. I'm like, oh, that's what happened with me. It's a beautiful thing. It's a very spiritual thing. And, and it, all I knew from that, and it was in my living room. I walked into my living room. It was fully there. And all the only message is that God wants me here. So one thing I knew, everything else disappeared. I didn't know why. I didn't have, still didn't have any answers, but I knew that I knew that I knew. 
I am here for God and for no other reason. It is the most clarifying, purifying moments, and I know you've all had them, when we're dropped to our knees and just say, when everything else is gone, what is it that lasts? What is it that's still there? And it dissolves all the other things. And then you continue to be the water that creates the pearls. You continue to grow and to learn, well, what does that even mean? What, what am I, why would, you know, you keep exploring and learning and growing and finding and, but always there's a joy. Even at that darkest hour, it's like, yes. It was, I knew, I knew. There's an inner profound joy that nothing in the verbal world can connect with. So in your darkest times, where have you gone? What is it that you have turned to that is eternal, that isn't going to go away, that you know no matter what is always going to be there? And you know that you know that you know. And all of this, where we want to get to, is that I know that I know that I know. Because that's what really creates the solidness of the pearl, that divine essence within us. It's not ambiguity. It's not dogma. It's not what anyone else has told us. It's not all the greatest books in the world or the greatest classes or the greatest experientials. I had this experience or that experience. Experiences, no matter how great they are, they come and they go. What is it that is there every single day? What is permeating my life when I'm home, when I'm with my children, when I'm with friends, when I'm at work, when I'm out in the world? What is it that permeates my life? That is the pearl of great price that nothing else compares to nothing comes even close to that is the pearl of great price and when we know that we know that we know there is a solidness that pearl is now not just in the formative ages also it will continue to evolve but it is solid so when i had that experience it made it solid in me i have grown so much since then so it's not like it's done but there's a knowing And so lastly, there's this tagline. It's not just the pearl. It's the pearl of great price. And that's an interesting one because we know that it's already been given. It's freely given. The divine freely gives of its gifts to us. We do not need to earn them. We don't need to do something to earn the pearl of great price. We were born with it. We were born with this beautiful soul, this radiant life full of joy and, and fulfillment. We were born with it. We don't have to earn it. We don't have to pay a great price for it. So what is this thing great price? The pearl of great price. What we find, and, and all of this, you all may already know all of this. I'm just, you, this talk might have just been for me. I don't know if this is, I don't know if it's, <laughs> I don't know if it's feeding you or not, but it's, the more we connect with it, we are willing to let everything else go that doesn't align with that. The pearl of great price. So when Jesus says that, and he says it a lot in different ways, is basically give up. If you really, really want to grow, if you really want to know the Christ, and again, we go to Carl Jung, if you want to follow the Christ, you follow the divine presence within you. If you really, really want that, you have to let everything go. Your atta our attachments to everything go. everything. That's why it's of great price. Let everything go. So I think of Eileen and I yesterday were talking about saints. We share a love of saints. And one of the things that I, because I didn't grow up in a traditional Christian home, so I could never figure out why anyone in their mind would want to just um, give up fun stuff. <laughs> like that, I just didn't get the point of it. I just like, why? God is in the fun stuff. Don't we want to experience and fully realize this is what we teach? God is, there's, non, there's no non-duality. God is in the joy and the creativity and the creating a, a beautiful home, having a car, a job that we love, a relationship we love. What is this whole thing about suffering and 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 having to sacrifice and be in pain. What is that? Like, it just made no sense to me. 
But as I was reading about these monks, I loved what one of them, Father Maximo, said. He said, you must think we're nuts to give up everything and there wasn't something even better that we were experiencing. And I'm like, yeah, that's actually true. That the more these monks would give up the things of this world, the greater their joy, the greater their love of humanity, pouring out, it just pours from this, this love of all people, like they, they, they can't help it. And, and nature, oh my gosh, you should hear, see the way they talk about nature and the birds and they're coming. I mean, they're just full of life. It doesn't make them less full of life. It makes them more full of life because now they're coming from the divine essence. They've given up all duality. They've given up all, uh, you know, in Hinduism and Bo uh, Buddhism, it's big on attachment and resistance. Giving up all their attachments, giving up all their resistances, all the things that they like, that they call good, all the things that they call bad. They just let it all go and they say only the the divine. That's why I asked Jack to play surrender. Surrender everything. Give, let go, let go, let go into to that divine essence within you, that divine pearl. If once we start to know it, we are going to give it everything that we are. And that happens in layers. I love Ramana Maharshi says there's very few people who can give up everything all at once. So our journey is very much about, okay, I'm ready to let this go. I'm ready to let this go. We let go and we let go and we let go and we let go and we become more full of life, more full of joy, more full of abundance, more full of grace, more full of everything that is heaven on earth. Heaven on earth comes from letting go. Heaven on earth comes from feeling fully our suffering. I was reading um, Bonnie, Hess, uh, Bonnie Rose's book. She's been talking about her journey through New Thought. She's a minister in CSL, and I love the book. And, and she loved manifesting. And, and she just talks about this time of suffering, and she said, I've discovered so much joy at the heart of it. I was amazed because it took me down into the depths, and in the depths there I found the divine that I never found in all the external stuff. There's something, she said, it's so rich, it's not just about transcending the difficulties, but when we go into them, we actually find the divine there. And then we know there's nothing to fear. There's only love to embrace all of it, this deep and abiding love. And it's this love that unifies us with everyone and everything. The great price is to give up everything to find love in everyone and everything. To know nothing and trust everything. There's one thing that, I love that. I stole that one from Bonnie too. Know nothing and trust everything as the divine essence within us that unifies us in love, as love, through love, with all of life. It's a reality that these are all words that I've been saying here today, but these are all fingers pointing at a reality that there are people in this world, and not just monks, there are people, I see Jack living it every day. There's people every day that you know, you are living it, and we're all growing and living in it more and more, that that love, that joy, that joy, it's gotta, if, it's not, if you're not feeling joy, you're off kilter. Not that you don't feel pain, we, we, but, but even in the feeling of the pain, we discover this depth of connection of love. We know, and, and you know it, right? You know when you're there. You know when you're there. Then you're nurturing it to bring it and be part of your everyday life, infusing it. The pearl of great price. The reason why this, this theme had such an impact on me this past week when I've been doing it for 23 years is because I felt it permeating my whole life in a way I hadn't realized before, and it was beyond words. It was like watching this incredible loving presence that has been, a, what do they say that? That's been creating this pearl inside of me that I didn't even know. That mother, they call it mother pearl. The, the, the essence, that layer that gets covered, that translucent, that's called the mother pearl. It's that mothering, nurturing energy that we are walking in every day of our life. May we have the curiosity to understand it and to know it because that pearl of great price is your pearl of great price. May we learn to treasure it with our whole heart, body, mind, and soul. Let's pray.
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am just so grateful for all the gifts that have already been given before we ever ask. I am so grateful for this infinitely, wildly, passionate, loving presence that is, transcends all time and all space. That is love itself. It is not a love that comes and goes. There's no more love yesterday than there is today. And there's no lo more love tomorrow than there is today. All the love that has ever been and ever will be right here, right now, at the center of our beingness. That beautiful divine essence at the center of our beingness, that pearl of great price, is made from, through, and as pure, unlimited, wild, passionate love. This is who we are. This is the image and likeness of which we were created. Love, love, and more love. Love without boundaries, love without limit, love that includes the entire cosmos. The inner cosmos, the outer cosmos is the one cosmos, and we are it. And we discover the beauty and the radiance of the divine pearl that each and every one of us is. We discover, we know it, we cultivate it, we nurture it, we mother it, we, we take care of it, we honor it, we respect it, we value it. We give everything to this divine essence within us, for it is everything. It is all the joy, all the love, all the peace, all the abundance, all the beauty that we could ever seek and long for. It is right here, right now, this beautiful, singular heart treasure, the pearl of great price, our divine soul. And so today we just give a, a prayer of celebration, a prayer of gratitude for this beautiful essence that is our soul, this beautiful divine pearl, this radiant Christ Atman Buddha self that we mother and nurture. We just say thank you, thank you, thank you, God, that in that all of our needs are met in wild abundance and wild and joy. All that we ever have wanted to express on all every level and dimension of being all the different layers that we are all of it is pouring forth as this beautiful christ essence of our beingness thank you thank you thank you in divine everlasting peace and unlimited love this love that is the source of all of us we just say thank you thank you thank you divine infinite self we let this word be now knowing it truly was fulfilled before it was ever spoken. And I invite us all to say as we let it go, and so it is. I walk in God in all I do. I walk in God in all that I say.